Bezad Hashem, we are starting a brand new week, a week of beauty, the week of Tiferet. We went through a b- week of love, a week of strength. Now we're going to go into a week of beauty. This is counting the 15th day of the Omer. And the first fira of the week, of course, is Chesed Sheba Tiferet. Chesed Sheba Tiferet is the love of beauty. And we're talking here about spiritual beauty, not physical beauty. And the thing that will draw the soul the most is beauty. And the same way that I'm drawn to physical beauty, then the soul also gets drawn to things. The soul is uh, me magnified a million times. So whatever I know on myself, the soul is much more sophisticated. The same way that I will be drawn to something beautiful, my soul also gets drawn to beauty. This is Tiferet. Tiferet is the beauty. The nature in the world, that's how Hashem created the world, that we get attracted to something nice. A nice car, nice house, nice clothes, nice pictures. I don't know many people says, they go into a store and says, give me the most horrible shirt that you have here. I want something horrible. Most people, even though they have different tastes, I remember not too long ago, somebody gave us a gift. They brought us a picture and they, the picture was in the living room on the couch. And I walked in and I was like, what the, what, what is that? And my wife was like, you don't like it? I said, that's the most hideous thing I ever saw in my life. You bought it? She was like, no, so-and-so brought it here as a gift. I was like, well, get rid of it. I don't like this. It's not going on my wall. And in the beginning, my wife was like, no, it's, don't you think it's pretty? I was like, no. There's nothing nice about it. And then the person who gave the gift came. She said, no, you like the picture? And I was like, not really. I mean, can we exchange? <laughs> and, and, and my wife is like, shh. No, no, shh. What, am I going to lie to the person? The picture is beautiful. I don't like the picture. It looks like somebody threw up on the canvas. Hey, don't you see Yerushalayim in here? I says, oh, my wife Yerushalayim looks like this. So nevertheless... The person who brought the, ca- the picture thought it was the most beautiful thing. And I was like, if I'm going to have to hang this on my wall, I'm coming through the back door every day. I am not going to be looking at this picture. So my wife was putting on an act for two weeks. After two weeks, she was like, Baruch Hashem, I'm so happy that you didn't like it because I couldn't stand it myself, but I didn't know what to do. She gave us the picture. So anyways, it was a very expensive picture. So we ended up getting, we, we, she said, okay, fine. We went to the store where she got it. We got like 17 other things instead of the picture. So, but practical and beautiful things. You run and give me already a gift. Let me enjoy what I'm at. I don't need to look at some horrible thing on the wall. But nevertheless, so this is already a matter of taste. But going back to what I was saying, the nature in the world is that we're going to be attracted to something beautiful. Of course, we can't argue on the taste. Let's say they say in Hebrew, on taste and smell you cannot argue. But nevertheless, beauty will attract me. Doesn't matter what it is. You go on the, on the street, what they put in the window is all the beautiful things. Why? Because they want to attract the, the customer to go in. So the nature in the world that I will be attracted to beautiful things. And the nature in the world that something that is not attractive will push me away. I don't know people that will come and look at something horrible and be like, wow, wow, this is extremely disgusting. I can't take my eyes off it. So again, the nature that we have here, we're being pulled to something pretty and beautiful and we're being pushed away from something that is not attractive. And we've seen many times in the Torah how beauty was the dominating thing. Where do we see it the first time? Is that Yaakov fell in love with Rachel based on her looks. He says, Vayitahev Yaakov Berachel. He fell in love with her. Ki Rachel aita yafat mare veyafat toar. She was gorgeous. And yafat mare yafat toar, that not only that she was beautiful, her neshama was beautiful. It actually says, not only on Rachel, on all of the matriarchs, that they were like uh, knockouts. I mean, I don't know if that's the right word of saying that. But uh, like gorgeous, gorgeous women. That it even says in one of the Midrashim that they're symmetrically everything. You know, when you go to a beauty pageant, if you put an a, a attractive woman, all the men will say she's attractive. Put her in a beauty pageant, they say, no, the nostril here is a little bit crooked and the eyebrow is not, it's not symmetric. And so Rachel was gorgeous. Yaakov Avinu fell in love with her because she was gorgeous. So 
And I'm not saying that she, he only fell in love with the body. She was a beautiful neshama. But nevertheless, the Torah says that she was yafat marev yafat toar. It doesn't say that she had a beautiful neshama. It just says her appearance was beautiful. And Yaakov, what it says, he loved her because she was beautiful. So we see that even in the Torah, there is the idea of love and beauty together. So this is chesed sheba tiferet, the love of beauty. So chesed is the power of love. Chesed sheba tiferet. Chesed in Tiferet is the love of beauty, Ahavat Yofi. Now again, we're not talking here about a nice car, or a beautiful clothes, or a, a, a picture, or an attractive individual. Is loving the beauty of the individual. Now comes a big question. Is beauty something good? Not always, be, all the time, beauty is good. <laughs> exactly. Sheker achen yofi. But not only that, there's a famous quote. Lo kol is zahav. Not everything that shines is gold. So is beauty always good? Maybe not. Maybe not always beauty is good. And exactly like you call it, Shlomo HaMelech, Sheker Achen Ve'evel Ayofi. Which is actually more correct to say, to, to quote Avraham Avinu, we spoke about that, even though Shlomo HaMelech wrote it, but this is the eulogy that Avraham Avinu said to Sarah, Eshet uh, Chayil. But nevertheless, the question here is beauty always good? So, excuse me? Yeah? So, First of all, we are commanded not to be tempted or seduced by beauty. Don't go after your heart and your eyes. Now, where did we see the first time that somebody was, so to say, tempted and seduced by beauty? With Chava, when she looked at the tree of knowledge. It says about the, about the fruit of the tree of knowledge, Tov it was beautiful, it was a gorgeous sight. Ta'ava la'inayim. They just looked at it and we, it's like uh, each and every one of us has this uh, weakness. For me, it would be for like a beautiful Lamborghini. For another person, it will be a nice Praga or Prada, uh, however it's called it, Gucci uh, 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 handbag. For another person, everybody has beauty, find something. For, for me, put a Lamborghini in front of me, you'll see me on the floor drooling. So, for a piece of metal. But nevertheless, it's a dot. Chava couldn't even stand the temptation. She just looked at it. It was beautiful. It was a desire and a lust for the eyes. So we have the commandment that we're not allowed to go after our desires and not to be tempted or to be pulled by beauty. But nevertheless, the Kadosh who created a beautiful world, and not only did he create a beautiful world, he created the nature in the world that I'm drawn to beauty constantly. I need to know how to put the right position of what's called chesed shebatiferet. How much do I love the beauty? Now I'll explain exactly what I mean, but first I want to title it. So I'll say it again. We got to position the right way, so to say, the love for beauty. It has, has to be love for beauty in the right place and not the love for a handbag or a car or something else. So, first of all, and most important, what I want to take from that is that I want to be, be beautiful. And again, not that it means that I have to stand in front of the mirror for three hours and make sure that every hair is in the right place. This is not what I'm talking about. That my personality will be beautiful. That my soul should be beautiful. That my behavior should be beautiful. I need to have the desire and the love that I want to be a beautiful individual and again, we're not talking about anything physical right now. We're talking only about my, my, my spirit, my neshama, my personality. So first of all, and most important, I have to see, is my personality beautiful? Am I shining when I walk into a room? Am I a, a, a source of inspiration? Or am I now a, a, a source of eyebrows being raised? Now, if I'm doing everything 100% kosher and still getting that, then that's the problem with the ones who are raising their eyebrows. But I constantly have to want and desire that my personality should be beautiful. This is what I mean when we want to be pretty. But we want to take it the next step, is that when I look at another person, I want to be able to see only the beautiful things in that person. The easiest thing in the world is to look at the person and to start pointing out a finger. Liar, thief, cheap, this, that, very easy. I now can take any person and dissect him within three seconds and see all the bad things in them. Very, very easy. 
The harder part here is to look at another person, to move the clutter of the things that I don't like, and to say I don't like 90%. But look at that. Look how patient that person is. Look what an amazing father that patient is. Look what that person is. Look how courteous this individual is. So when I want to love beauty, is, and to be attracted to beauty, again, I know we talked about physical things, completely erase it from the data right now. I'm not talking, there's nothing about physical here. The reason why I mentioned the physical beauty is only to understand that the Torah is warning me, don't be tempted into physical beauty. Don't be seduced and tempted by something that is beautiful, it will cause you to sin. Exactly like Chava. I mean, we're not going to get now into the discussion if it uh, was predestined, it was a conspiracy from Hashem. The fact is that Chava is the mother of all mankind, and she comes to teach me when you are being weak in front of something beauty, you'll fail. You'll fall into a sin. That's why I mentioned the physical beauty in the world. I got to be careful. Don't be so quickly drawn into beautiful things in the world. The beauty in the world that Hashem was created is the emotional, spiritual, mental, and, and personality, this has to be br a, a pretty. So we have two things and how we're looking at it, two approaches. The first one is that I want to constantly want to be pretty. I'm not negating the fact that when you wake up in the morning and you want to make yourself look normal. The Torah actually tells you, you have to look presentable. It doesn't say anywhere in the Torah that you have to look like a, like a shloch. You have to be dressed nice, hair should be combed and so forth. Torah tells you, you have to look normal be uh, uh, pre presentive and so forth. So, so I want to look no normal, can't look like, exactly, I have to be, I don't know the right word in English, to be presentable the right way. Dignified, Dignified. yeah, exactly. That's why you see that uh, 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 in, in many cultures, not only in Judaism, then the, how you dress and how you look, it's very important, no doubt about it. But, of course, you can go overboard. You can't be in front of the mirror for three hours because there's one hair sticking out here and now you, you can't go because the hair and the, the clothes and the shoes and the... You can't go overboard with this. But really, when we want to be beautiful, is that my personality should be beautiful. That's one thing, that's it. End of story. But, when we're taking it the next level, since we want to work on relationships and my midot, then I want to get to a point that I can see in every individual the beautiful points in them. And it doesn't mean that I have to get along with that person. It doesn't mean that the person has to be my best friend. But instead of judging the person to see the fact that the person is a liar, or speaks Lashon Ara, or is a thief, or whatever, to see that person has to have some type of beauty in them. And this is really how we get to the ultimate mitzvah of Avat Israel. So I know I mentioned in the previous class that for us in Israel, the week of Gvura was parallel to Parashat Kedoshim, with where we find the mitzvah of Ahav Tel HaKamocha. Okay, so now for us it's a week ahead, but for the rest of the world, the week of Tiferet falls on Parashat Kedoshim, also Ve'ahav Tel HaKamocha. She, we spoke about it many times, Rabbi Akiva says, the Klal Gadol Batorah. Klal can be translated as a rule, Klal is also general. Now, if you, not general in the army, general, like uh, something general. So, Rabbi Akiva says, the Klal Gadol Batorah, it means that Avat Israel is a general title to mitzvot of lo tigno, velo tisna et achicha bilvavecha, velo daber lashon hara, don't steal, don't hate, don't commit adultery, don't have jealousy, don't slander. So, Avat Israel is the general rule, Klal Gadol, but the actual mitzvot, these are the Avat Israel. Mitzvot ben adam lechavero, which would mean another person. That's really Avat Israel. How do I get to do Avat Israel? Is when I see the beauty in every individual. Everybody has beauty. There's a beautiful chidush on the sentence, Be'ahavta le'recha kamocha. If you translate it word to word, you should love your fellow friend like you love yourself. Right? But if you read it in proper Lashon Kodesh, in proper Hebrew, it's Ve'ahavta le'recha, comma, you should love another person, how? Kamocha. Like how Hashem loves that person. Not like how you love yourself. It's not a competition. It's how Hashem loves the person. So if any individual around me exists, it means that Hashem loves them the same way that He loves me. Me, He loves because I'm good here. You, He loves because you're amazing here. You, He loves because you are unbelievable here. I might not see it. But if Hashem loves you, 
then I have to love Hashem. I have to have, love that person. Like Hashem loves that person. So the ultimate way of getting to Vahavta Lecha Kamocha is when I know how to start looking at the beauty of every individual and everybody has beautiful parts in them. Practically saying, so we can apply some uh, uh, action here. First of all, I have to look at myself and I have to see where can I look better. Both on the physical appearance, because it's kavod la briot, it's honor and respect to creation. I can't come into a room with a bad odor or looking uh, dirty. Or, it's not mechubad, it's not respectful. So first of all, I have to look at my appearance. Can I get better in any type of way? That's one thing. Second thing, now look at my own personality. Can I get a be become a much more better personality? Maybe I'll scream a little bit less. Maybe I'll be a little bit less vulgar. Maybe I'll be a little bit less, uh, you know, hurtful to some people. Some people, they constantly like being sarcastic and say all these comments. So I have to look at myself. How am I improving my image? Spiritually, emotionally, physically, and so forth. Now, the more uh, uh, important part, a little bit harder, is to look at every person and to say, how can I see the beauty in that person? Now, if it's a person that you admire, uh, you love, that's an easy task. Go now to a person that you don't like so much, that doesn't uh, uh, get along with you that well. And now try to look at that person and say, yes, I don't like that person because they do A, B, and C. But let me see what I can love in that person. They must do something good. They must have some type of quality that I can recognize that beauty. And again, you don't have to love that person. You don't have to become the best per friend of that person. But I have to recognize something beautiful in that person because you know the famous quote of the Baal Shem Tov? If you're able to see something negative in somebody, you know why? Because you have it. If I am able to see in you something that is not attractive emotionally or in your personality or behavior, it means that I have exact same problem, so I know how to recognize it. Now, if I don't have that in me, then I'm not going to recognize it in you because it doesn't exist in me. In the, in the exact words, I don't know because I don't speak Yiddish, but uh, the Baal Shem Tov used to speak Yiddish. I don't know what the words he actually used in Yiddish, but nevertheless, the, the, the way he explains it is that if I see a deficiency in somebody else, a chisaron must be that I have this chisaron. A chisaron is a lack or a deficiency or something missing. So if I'm able to see in a person that that person oh, talks Lashonara all day long, well, it must be that you talk Lashonara because you recognize the language. And if you say to that person, oh, that person is so cheap, well, probably you're cheap. So you can recognize that that person is cheap. So I'm just giving examples. And chas v'shalom without trying to hurt anybody's feelings. But what I'm saying is that if I look at a person that I don't like so much, and I see a lot of negative things, all these negative things that I see is because I possess them and I need to refine myself. You know how I will refine myself? By saying, let's ignore these horrible things that that person has. He's an amazing father. She's an amazing educator. She's an amazing mother or wife or whatever it is. And I'm able to, yeah, I recognize 90% disgusting. But 10%, 15%, 30%, I focus on the good. Not only that I'm arousing the good in that person, I'm also refining myself. This is another thing that the Baal Shem Tov says. And again, I don't know Yiddish. I read the translations. He says that if I talk bad about somebody, this is the, the Baal Shem Tov approach on Lashon Ara. Why is Lashon Ara so bad? Because when I talk now something bad about you, I'm arousing this power in you. So if I now slander a person and I say that person is a thief or that person did so and so, then I'm taking these words and these words are empowering this energy in that person. Now if I start telling, no, the person is kind and courageous and, and uh, bal chesed, uh, very charitable, then I'm arousing that in that person. That's why you see many times the mothers will call their child tzaddik, uh, you know, you're so amazing. Why? You want to arouse that. It's very easy for me to come to a person and to call him a liar. You're a liar, you're a thief. But if I start coming to a person and start calling that person unbelievable, how charitable you are, you're so patient, you're so uh, loving, that I'm arousing these emotions in that person. Therefore, the Baal Shem Tov says, why is it so bad? Because I'm now giving power to these midot in that person and I'm arousing and empowering these midot, these characteristics in that person. So when I look at another person and I judge them favorably, not only that I'm judging them favorably, and I'm helping that person, 
I'm helping myself. Because like I told you again, if I recognize something bad in somebody else, it means I have it. Therefore, the Mishnah tells me, Never judge another person until you stand in his own shoes. Trust me, if you will be in his shoes, I don't know if you would behave much better, probably even much worse. So, to conclude, the chesed of Tiferet is to take this beautiful beauty that Hashem created, the physical beauty, don't fall for the temptation to, to pull you into something that chas v'shalom will drag you into a sin. But nevertheless, Everything, everything around us is beauty. There's beauty all around us. Start recognizing the beauty in everything in creation, not only in human beings, in everybody around you, everything around you. And now let me find, we're going to go through this whole week now, how am I empowering the beauty in me? There's something beautiful in there. I might think, oh, I'm such a low life, I did so many bad things, I'm this, I'm that. If I have an neshama in me, I'm possessing in me a 20,000 carat diamond in my neshama, now start um, reaching out to this depth to reveal this beauty in me. And trust me, the more you refine yourself on the outside, the beauty from the inside starts shining. Then you suddenly start seeing, wow, it's actually, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a much better individual than I thought. So we're going to have a beautiful week revealing the beauty in us, beauty in other people, beauty in creation. Kadosh Baruch created the world only with 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 the best material. There's nothing horrible in this world. We just need to know how to reveal this beauty. Zad Hashem should have a beautiful, successful week, a week of tiferet, of inner beauty, and revealing the inner beauty. Zad Hashem, we should only see the yofi, the, the beautiful creation in everything that Hashem does. And needless to say, and how we can see the, how beautiful the world is. <laughs>